Greetings, dear friends. We're happy to welcome you to the international discussion dedicated to the International All People's Forum Global Crisis, We Are People, We Want to Live. That took place on Saturday, May 7th. This forum raised an immense amount of feedback and continues to resonate with millions of people around the globe. The reason for this are topics that were raised during the massive online event which was simultaneously interpreted into 100 languages and was initiated and entirely realized by ordinary people, thousands of volunteers from more than 180 countries of the world and united millions of people worldwide. The topic that were discussed are the following. Climate, common enemy of the entire humanity, record breaking speed, of climate cataclysms? Why are the world media silent about the scale of threats? Modern collaborationism, who plays on the side of humanity's common enemy? The true cause of global climate change, who conceal the truth from people and why? Influence of astronomic processes and their cyclicity. Refugees, why does this concern everyone? Escalation of violence in society, slavery and human trafficking, and many, many more. The most important is that we did not just shed light on the problems, but we also offered solutions that are undoubtedly required for the survival of humanity and revival of civilization. People around the globe heard the truth about our situation, what we are in right now. And there are a lot of comments, reviews, and messages in all forms that are pouring in because people understand that this global crisis we are facing right now is a crisis of consumerist format of our modern society where profit is the main value. The message that we have to change the way we live by building creative society where human life is of the highest value. And once again, heard, it was heard from all over the world. Thank you, Alexander. Very, very nice explanation about forum. And today, in our international online discussion, together with our respected speakers, we will continue to uncover the topics raised during this forum, as well as share our impressions of this significant event. And I'm honored to introduce you to our guest. Guadalupe Rodriguez, anthropologist and lawyer from Mexico. Welcome, Guadalupe. Sharon Bartholesi, private tutor from South Africa and our Zulu interpreter. Dr. Konstantin Rybachuk, our um, active participant of Creative Society Project and our interpreter to English. And Marek Jakubis, data analyst and also active participants of Creative Society Project. Welcome, dear friends. We are so happy to have you here with us today. Looking forward to our discussion. And before we start, let's watch the short video about the forum. This forum is created for the people by the people, by the Creative Society volunteers from around the world. Сегодняшний день, он действительно знаменательный. Почему? Потому что сегодняшнее событие, оно закладывает наше будущее, наше общее будущее. Is the product of months of hard work of volunteers, each driven by the desire to live. It took millions of people to bring this information to you. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. The last war of humanity is already going on. The enemy is destroying everyone in its path. 
At first, I thought it was a bomb explosion. It's scary. It's very scary. I honestly thought that I was going to die. It is cruel and inhumane. It attacks recklessly and mercilessly. It destroys everyone in its way, sparing neither women nor the elderly or children. And these are just its first attacks. It won't agree on humanitarian corridors. It won't sign a peace agreement. It doesn't need time to regroup. And it won't run out of missiles. With each new attack, the enemy only gets stronger. What can we oppose against this enemy? Can we, humans, survive this war? If meanwhile, instead of carrying out planetary mobilization and creating a united front, we are killing each other. I don't want to die. I want it all to be over as soon as possible. Из за войны, которая сейчас идет в Украине, клиенты обращаются к запросами, что их детей изнасиловали военные. Таких историй тысячи. Я прожил две недели в оккупации со своей семьей. Все две недели это сплошной непрекращающийся кошмар. Однажды мы шли к колодцу за водой, и просто человека расстреляли. Вот за что? За то, что шел за водой. Люди погибали от авиаударов, от минометных обстрелов и хоронили своих родных прямо возле их домов, потому что никто не вывозил трупы. Очень хочется, чтобы люди одумались, пока мы не уничтожили друг друга. И этот мир построили мы. Мы — люди. Война в Украине — это, это безумство. Когда видишь это, когда слышишь это. Но то, что было сделано в городах Украины, будет во всем мире, на всех континентах, во всех городах, потому что климат в миллионы раз серьезней, что мы до последнего будем ждать, когда в дом каждого зайдет враг и начнет убивать. Только тогда начнем шевелиться и кричать караул. Сколько бы ни кричали, не сможем ничего сделать. Everyone will lie in one mass grave unless we rally our strength today and stand united against the common enemy. Yes, it's hard, but we must do so if we want to survive. For we are people. We want to live. Наша цель и задача — доказать, что мы люди. Наша цель и задача — доказать, что мы цивилизация. Прекратить грязь, которая у нас есть, прекратить убийство людей, восстановить справедливость в этом мире, восстановить ценность жизни человеческой. Вот наша задача, та задача, за которой мы здесь сейчас и боремся. Пришло время. Стать настоящим человеком. Пришло время создать все условия для того, чтобы выжило все человечество. Yes, indeed, this forum really gives an idea and understanding that we really need to unite and act and build the future for all of us, build a creative society. If we live as it is right now, we will face very, very sad reality. And no one of us would like to go through this terrible horror scenario that some of the participants of creative society already faced. And some of the people in the world are facing right now. And we really need to do everything possible to use all our potential and all our resources in order to prevent and really build a creative society. 
And our first question, I would like to ask Vadelupo. Could you please share your thoughts and feedback about this amazing event? Claro, este, Marina, Alexander, todos, buen, buen día. Yes, you, Marina, Alexander, and everyone, greetings. I think that the lesson which we got in the forum is we need to act right now. We have to take immediate action, stop wars, stop all the things that we are destroying, that is destroying our planet, and this is a cry, a cry for help to stop it now. We cannot wait any longer. It has to be immediate global action. We see children, we see women, we see people who are left homeless. We also see that all of this is happening in the face of climate change, which we have instigated, and it is also devastating, destructive. So we need to work immediately. We should come together. But governments don't seem to be listening to us. Governments do not seem to be paying attention. So we need the population. We need people to stand up, to rise and stop what is happening. Because the situation is not waiting any longer. It cannot and won't wait anymore. And with this, with this deterioration, we're all going to go down, to sink, to drown. I think it's one of the lessons which Forum has taught us is that we can all speak the same language about stopping, stopping what is terrible happening. It's the language of solidarity and support for each other. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's really important that we really need to start speaking that one language and uh, really explain to the whole humanity that we are a people and we want to, to live. And you know, during the 11 hours broadcast, the forum was simultaneously interpreted by volunteers. And it's really amazing. It's a, this tremendous effort was done again by regular people from heart to heart. And it was such a high quality and just really awesome translation that we can't even call the people interpreters uh, who participated because they are real speakers of the forum and today with us we have also several translators who have interpreted during live broadcast and i would like uh, to ask you sharon can you please share what motivates you to do that can you please explain what also impressed you in the forum please share okay what impressed me and what motivated me to do what I did is when I go through the uh, information that has been given throughout the forum, it makes me feel like, you know, in this world as we are living, you, you, you don't think that there are people who care about other people's lives. You always think like everybody thinks for themselves. But when I, I realized that there are a group of people who are willing to go an extra mile and who are willing to even sacrifice their own lives just for the sake or just for, the, uh, for other people's lives, it motivated me to do whatever I did. And also to realize that this is our planet. And together we need to unite and to make sure that we survive in it because it is our gift that we have been given. So we need to take care of it and we need to live together in it and we need to, to fight against this uh, enemy, which is the climate. So yeah, that's what motivated me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sharon. And another interpreter and eyewitness of many war crimes, um, that we discuss uh, during the conference is Konstantin Revachuk. And I would like to ask you, uh, Kostya, can you please share what motivates you to participate? And why do you think it is so important to raise such a topic, such a difficult topic, and um, not be silent? Thank you very much, dear friends. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Well, first of all, why I'm participating? I am participating because I do care. I do care and I know, um, and I was actually, I was able to make sure that the horrible world that we are living today is built by us. 
I mean, we should not be blaming someone else but us because with our being inactive, with our indifference, with our tolerance to crimes, to crisis, to violence, to all the other horrible things which are happening right now in the world, we should not be blaming anyone else but us. I mean, if someone people believe that, you know, in all the, you know, crimes, in all the, in all the you know, disasters, um, someone else is guilty, it means that we're indifferent. Why? Because we're tolerating violence when we see that. We're tolerating inequality when we see that. We're keeping silence. We're not, um, you know, raising these topics and we're not trying to solve them because all that horror that i was actually able to see with my own my eyes my son has seen that the war crimes it was done by people i mean by usual people like you and me it means that the rest of the society is tolerating that i mean that um if we want a better world we should be more active. We should raise our voice when we see injustice, when we see inequality. For example, one of the topics that, for example, was raised during the conference that um, a lot of starving people all over the world right now, about 30,000 people die every day uh, because of hunger. And about 800 million people go to bed be hungry which is totally insane because at the same time in the world we have everything. We have money, we have technologies, we have people, we have knowledge and skills how to solve that problem. And that problem can be solved very easily. I mean, what those people need is just food, right? Because at the same time we have uh, over a billion of people who are over consuming. And we know for sure that one third of all the goods which is being produced is just thrown away. And not because, you know, those products are bad. It's just because for the sake of keeping the price for the product at a certain level. It means that we as a society, we're tolerating this, you know, injustice, this uh, stupidity that we are, um, we value money more than the life of a regular person, which is not right. That's, the, that's actually the essence of the consumerist society, where on the first place is money. And we're talking about right now the creative society where the situation is opposite. On the first place is the human life. And it means that in order to uh, solve the problems that we have, for example, with hunger, with water crisis, with refugees car crisis, we just need to change the vector of our thinking. And of course, the development of the society it means to put on the first place is the life of a regular person. I was very much... Uh, angry uh, when I was watching and of course the Turpentine at the same time the forum that we have dozens of international organizations all over the world which are aimed to solve the problems of refugees of water crisis of same food crisis we have hundreds of uh, national organizations who are doing pretty much the same but at the same time, we see that these problems are getting worse. I mean, they're not solved. We still have a lot of areas, even continents in the world, where uh, people are facing water crisis, food crisis, refugee crisis. And these organizations are not doing anything. And again, all these things are done by people. I mean, if we are keeping silence, if we are not active in raising our voice if we are not acting in telling uh these people that guys you're not doing what you're supposed to do every year from year to year you keep asking more and more money for solving these problems but still the problems are getting worse so it means that you are doing something not right and since why not voicing that these people keep doing the same because they think it's normal. I mean, no one is saying anything. And that's where we should, you know, take an active step. If we want to live in a better society, and um, <clears throat> from my own experience, uh, I appeared myself with my family in the war zone, uh, no one is secured from this problem. No one. I mean, 
today you are living in a peaceful country, you know, tomorrow it may change. Today you are living in the calm climatic zone, tomorrow it may change. I mean, and nobody is protected from that. And during the forum, it was very much clearly showing that, for example, when um, the um, climate crisis comes, right, uh, the area is facing like a tornado, a hurricane, or other <clears throat> or other disasters. Uh, no one is rescued, beside you know rich and influence people with their stuff. I mean, who is going to rescue me or my family or you and your family when uh, that disaster comes? If you're hoping that someone is going to come, sorry to disappoint you, but nobody is going to come because those people are very limited in their resources. And again, that, uh, that problem should be solved by us because we should not be silence we should not be you know indifferent we should be more active in uniting people and telling people that guys if we are facing right now a global pro problem like a global uh, climate change then we need to come up with global solutions like for example to creating a global rescue service a global logistic food service a global water logistic service that would be able at difficult times to supply suffered with uh sheltering with food with uh clothing with uh, you know medicine and you know all those types of uh, things that would be able to solve the problems globally right now we are all isolated separated because uh we are I don't know, we've become so uh, isolated and that isolation comes first of all from the mind because we are not willing to acknowledge that uh, the comfort zone that we used to live for many, many years may, may disappear at any moment. And we do not even want to think about that. And in this term, I would like to say great thanks to all people who were a part of preparing the International Forum because uh, those people understand what is happening right now. They are not afraid to tell the truth. And they call the entire humanity for um, joint actions that would be able to help us to solve the problems globally like i told already the global rescue service the global food water medicine supply services that uh when you know disaster or the problem happens will uh help other people and that's possible only in the creative society where I've mentioned already the first value is the life of every human being as soon as as soon as we understand that uh, we will be able to start, you know, acting more actively and more productively. Otherwise, we're going to stay isolated, separated and alone when something happens to us. And in that case, nobody is going to come and help us. We need just to do for some people, probably the most difficult part is just to change uh, the way of thinking and to understand that our comfort zone that we used to cherish and to love so much no longer exists, no longer exists. No one is secure at this moment because we have faced the global enemy, climate change. It is not taking hostages. It is not stopping. It is uh, not the one that we can come into negotiations, it, it is not going to sign with us any peaceful agreement or whatsoever. It is going just to continue. Otherwise, we're, or just we unite our technologies, human potential, knowledge, and, you know, our other resources, and we, you know, come against this enemy as a united humanity. Then we have, you know, chances. Otherwise, no. And that was clearly shown during the forum. People, and that's a very positive sign that people stop being afraid of telling the truth 
people stop being afraid of silence and begin voicing the problems that we as a humanity is facing. And what is more important, more and more people are uh, beginning to act and be active participants of the Creative Society Project and active participants of changing this world for the better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Constantine. It's true. It's, this forum really gave an understanding that every single person on Earth right now is in danger and our personal comfort zone bubble can pop anytime soon. And if we people would like to leave, we really need to state it very, very loudly that we people, we would like to leave and we need creative society and we need to shout out loud that message that every single person on earth can hear and understand clearly. That creative society is our only chance. Exactly, and that's actually the forum shows very clearly this uh, difference between our modern uh, society that uh, consumer is. So why we call it consumer is because money are on the, on the first place. People need to earn somehow money and that's all these cycles and all the processes that are happening in our society. But what's, what really amazed me is this actually an issue with um, a typical issue that we have in our modern civilized world, honor and lack of water, but we have a lot of technologies. Why we cannot do that? The reason is because if there is no problem, there is no financement for organizations who are trying to solve this problem. And it just like this different, a little bit different goal and already changed everything. And in creative society, it will be not even a question. And there are a lot of other um, moments that really can amaze. And I would like to ask Marek, can you please share your thoughts and your feedback about this amazing event? What impressed you the most? Thank you. What impressed me the most? Uh, I was shocked with the video of uh, our friends in Ukraine. And uh, I was shocked to see that people who I know, who we were friends with, basically, uh, from one day to another, um, their life has completely changed. Completely. And there was this, this understanding that the same can happen to me as well, because uh, how, our, uh, how our mind works. Uh, if something happens somewhere, before it was Iraq, Syria, I don't know what, we just used to see uh, a news, and that was, that was it. We didn't really pay attention to all of the, let's say, people suffering. Um, usually, the news told us uh, how much money will it cost to restore, but barely anyone was talking about human life, you know. So what I was shocked is, um, on one way, it was very well uh, edited, that uh, at the beginning, you know, there was uh, this, this, this camera, this show at um, one of the cities uh, day before uh, attack. So the children are playing, you know, on the playgrounds, the sun was shining, everything was fine, you know, all the people were happy. And then the shot and few days later, everything destroyed, basically people uh, hidden in the, in the shelters. Uh, as uh, Constantine was, I was really inspired by what, what Constantine was saying, that uh, he had this option. So there was hunger, and he had this option whether to go to bring the food and realizing that uh, you may not return. This is, this is absolutely uh, understandable, uh, how we can have this situation in the 21st century right now, where we have all of these technologies, where we could live a beautiful life, you know, so um, I think the value of this uh, forum is that uh, it brought to the surface all mm, the issues that we are uh, facing today because uh, um, we can say that uh, people today are usually uh, used not to go do deep into problems. So they usually stay on the surface, what is being shown on the social media, they just quickly go through and that's it don't analyze don't they just consume uh we just consume what is being presented to us you know 
And I was also actually, that, that was uh, kind of shock and funny a little bit because the day after I've seen that the content of the conference was classified as dangerous or not appropriate by some of the media, you know, reality being classified by media is not appropriate. In what world are we living? This is, this is not possible. What touched me the most, uh, one other thing that touched me also uh, was when there was this graph, how much money we have spent on uh, fighting climate. I think since two, 2002, it was 5,000 billion US dollars. Where is the money? Uh, I mean, if we look outside, you know, our energy prices are going up. We have got unstable energy supplies. Look at the people in Germany that needed to find, that needed to buy, you know, the electricity. Where is this money? I mean, someone is playing with human life, you know. And there is this understanding uh, about um, the urgency of uh, of this topic, and uh, that is the value of of this conference, of this of this forum, is uh, that it, sh it it really puts on the surface all the all the problems. For people to see, because only if people see, um, this can overcome this internal barrier. Sometimes I have the feeling that there is this internal barrier. We we um, we listen we listen to something, but we just don't hear it. The information just uh, passes through us without our realizing the importance, realizing anything. And uh, so, so the highest value of this conference, I think, that uh, it brings this information in such an e easy to understand uh, way, so that it does not let any human negligent, I would say, to, to the problematic. So that's for now. Thank you so much, Mark. And I also agree, absolutely agree with you that our future and the future of our near and dear ones depends on how fast we will be able to share this information with people around the world. And once we know the truth about the danger hanging over us, the truth about humanity's real enemy, the climate, it is impossible not to act in order to prevent that disaster. And I'm not exaggerating uh, when I say that the fate of whole humanity depends on the action of each and every one of us who shares the information about the forum and the information about the creative society as the only one solution to this terrible situation. And many of you already shared and help spread that information in your countries around the world did everything possible and i would like to ask guadalupe i know that you work for organization organization that help with uh, uh, to eliminate violence in your country and right before forum in order to spread that information about forum and in order to invite people to participate and watch the forum you invited our participants to introduce to do the uh, a short overview of the forum in your country could you please share why do you think it is so important that people will watch that forum what do you think will help when they watch it Thank you. I was thinking, I was listening to Mark and Constantine. I listened to our colleagues, our friends, and I was thinking about the demand which we have, which we should make to our media. Mass media, which cover only war, they cover only some spectacles, expectations, performances, pornography, and what is done around uh, in terms of violence, people's pain. But for example, those efforts which the Creative Society project is making, it's obvious it's not done by the mainstream media. These uh, Creative Society um, broadcasts 
broadcasts are covered by mass media. Uh, CNN, Fox, other media channels, why aren't they also cover those uh, such videos? Because I was thinking when I was listening to Marek and Konstantin, it is so important to also look there and demand request that all these TV channels would show the different side also. If there is pain, if there is anger, if there is sadness, we should show it. This is necessary, but these encouraging ways of organizing and finding a solution, immediate solution must also be visible. That's true, we good people don't have a lot of capitals, but we have networks, social media, and we have an ability and the power to call for and to bring attention to the fact that people are coming together, they demand to stop it all. Uh, to stop everything that is going through, to resist the climate which we are experiencing. This whole situation is very painful, but the reality is such that these big countries, huge economies, don't care about this because they don't have policies help. But instead, they keep building up military industries, don't they? And it's obvious that uh, we can recognize this, that the value of human life, the value of people missing, missing in the heads of those governments and officials. There is no such an idea of value, the value of human life, and this is tragic. Both you and the forum speakers said that we are humans, we are people, we're not commodities, but it seems to be the opposite, because I thought about the ratings, uh, I thought about uh, how we can consume, what we consume without thinking, and uh, it's tragic because we don't even think what we consume in terms of information, and also what Konstantin said, his words make me feel pain when I watch the video, when I listen to him, Constantine asked in his video life, who is to blame? And he also asked, you know, it made me wonder, me, Guadalupe, what have I done to change my inability to see other reality? Me, Guadalupe, I'm also an advocate that we should stop all this. Constantine's speech struck me as extremely powerful and provoking things, and thoughts in my head. Of course, I also thought that we have individual case crisis because we live in inequality in various countries. There are people who have a lot, and on the on the other hand, there are people, many people who don't have a lot. They have little. There are big com companies that would rather throw food away than give it to people who have nothing to eat. So I think it's necessary to get together, have a dialogue, and it is necessary to interact. It is not, it's also important to continue to voice this information, to address people with power, the media, influential media, that they should cover such social events as this forum which is organized. This forum has provided factual information to think about a lot of insights on a personal level because I'm just as much a consumer in this society. So I should talk about it in my family, with my neighbors, at school, at work, every day. And the forum enabled me myself to conduct these discussions on a daily basis. This is very important, very important, because we noticed and see that those who have technology capabilities, who have access to resources, they should stop doing terrible things but they do not listen to us, they do not see this, and um, it's not encouraged that these organizations who have all the ben benefits they should have. This is my reflection, I think that is some reason and cause to continue so these dialogues, so which seem very important to your efforts, for everything that you're doing. And really, we as humanity should not tolerate any violent action. We as humanity should unite and really 
just get rid of it, of any kind of, of any form of violence. Because it happens only because many people are still silent, closing their eyes to what is happening. But we can change everything. And it's in our hands. It's really, we can do everything in order to really stop it once and for all. Because we can create conditions that will not allow anyone to act in any violent form to any person. Because it will be forbidden. And the conditions must be created. Conditions of creative society, of eight foundations. Especially the first one, value of life of each person. And in order to spread this message, we need to act. We need to act very actively and rapidly. And I would like to again come to our dear uh, interpreters. You're doing a lot by interpreting the forum, the message of the forum into your language. So you allow other people to get known, create a society, to really know a lot and learn uh, how we can change this format, this violent format. What else besides interpretation can a simple person do in order to spread this message as far as possible? I can only provide an example. Uh, every time I'm preparing uh, for the interpretation and uh, looking, at the, looking at the speeches and translating them, it uh, always, uh, I kind of uh, get this uh, understanding of uh, the message that... Uh, that the speaker would like to share with the people. And uh, the more understanding, the more deeper understanding of an issue there is, the easier it is then to speak with the people. This is, this is, this is, my, uh, this is my experience. So every time I would like to uh, share, let's say, the idea about creative society, it's much e easier uh, to underline it by some facts that were, in, uh, that were mentioned in in a speech, you know, and um, so, but I would also like to go uh, back to the point uh, that uh, Guadalupe uh, mentioned about uh, the media, you know, and uh, why the media is not uh, supporting, because this also is uh, interconnected with, with, with the sharing of the information. And the answer is very simple. The media today is just uh, another instrument for making business, you know, the media have got shareholders, and as you can uh, see uh, in one of the foundations of creative society, the media belong to people because only in that way the media can share the information uh, truthfully and without any intention to manipulate uh, the society, etc. And uh, so, so the shareholders of the current media, if they supported creative society, they would lose their business. That's why, and we could see it in, uh, in, in one of the speeches, I think it was Tali, or no, it was uh, Alexei who mentioned this example with how BBC basically turned over uh, the interview that they had with employee of, of, of the BBC. So uh, this, just clears, this just clearly proves uh, the standpoint of, of, of the current media. And that's why it's so important to use all available other channels such as social networks, such as uh, these international discussions, such as uh, talks with, uh, with, with anyone uh, to do it. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark. And Constantine, uh, I have a question to you. So, how we can empower people um, to act? how we can reach people's heart in order um, them to understand the importance of building the creative society and act immediately without losing every any second <clears throat> thank you very much marina for the question uh how you know uh if we understand right now that we're at war with the climate, right, and we have a choice, either we win or we lose. So in, in this case, 
anything is absolutely acceptable when we want to spread information among people about the way out of the situation, uh, which is the creative society. We should use any possible way to tell people that we need to stop living in the consumerist format of thinking, living, uh, that sooner or later, whether we want it or not, we will have to leave our comfort zone and face the reality. And in this case, I think we, we would just need talk. We just need talk because that's the only way to persuade people that they need to stop acting. I mean, it's like, you know, from heart to heart, uh, like, when you're communicating with a person, uh, the person, uh, first of all, thinks like, oh, come on, you're telling me what I've been, you know, listening like for hundreds of years from, you know, various of philosophers and so on and so forth. But when you are given the examples which you faced, for example, from your experience, what you've seen, and you are telling the person truly that he is not, you know, secured from that, he is not protected from that, he is not, you know, going to be safe sooner or later uh the person in the conversation they start to understand that yeah that possibly the guy you know has something in mind and he's sharing with me that information that he wants to help me and sincerity and openness of heart helps to reach the heart of the other person um when the people see that you're not, you know, trying to get something from them, but you're just sharing information with the person wishing this person to live in the better world, in the better society, the people feel that. I mean, openness, your open heart, uh, when you're sincere, when, you know, you're honest, that would help. And no matter what, I mean, even journalists, after the conference, I met with a journalist the day after the conference, I met with a journalist, we communicated and I was asking her just, hey, um, can you please advise how I can, you know, reach more people, uh, tell them about the forum that just passed. Uh, and we've been talking, we've been talking for at least three hours in the row when I was telling her about the importance of, of the creative society, about the uh, the importance of changing the format, about the importance of uh, voicing uh, the problems that we are facing right now, about the problems that like food, water, refugee crisis, we're trying, you know, sort of to solve, but indeed not. Um, she understood me. After three hours, she shared with me at least four uh, more contacts of journalists who would be able to, you know, to share this information within their network. And with one of the contacts uh, of a person who is involved in political sphere. So people listen to that. Um, when they, again, I will repeat myself, when they see that you are not trying to get from them some kind of you know financial support or financial help you are not trying to somehow influence on them because you would like to you know be popular on the topic of some kind of crisis or whatever uh people feel your sincerity your honesty and they listen to you they hear that you are telling the truth I mean, the truth is important here because, you know, that probably what we need most of all right now, the truth, the truth that we are truly in the deadlock right now, the truth that we as a civilization stuck in um, many different types of crisis and we don't see the way out because that's our way of you know mind thinking again i will repeat myself what i said in the previous part that when we start thinking in terms of human life first but not money then everything can be solved you know 
very, very quickly. And again, when you're explaining people that that's possible, they believe you. They believe you. This is the time for the truth, the time for actions. Uh, because, because we have no choice. Because we're all people and we all want to live. And that's, you know, what we need to get to. Either, like I said already, either we win, you know, again, against this crisis and the cataclysms, or we lose. And that's only the way out. Uh, also, I would like to tell people, guys, no matter how hard it is, but try to understand that your comfort zone uh, is very, very temporary. It pretty much does not exist. You may lose it at any moment. I've seen that with my own experience when, for example, on the 23rd of February night, the 23rd of February, like a regular night, you know, I've came from work, had dinner with my family, just we watched the television, did some house routine, and I went, went to bed because we had to go early the next morning back to work as usually. Uh, but we didn't because the war began. You know, when you are awakened by, not by the alarm clock, but a telephone call from my mother-in-law, for example, in my case, it was, she was very anxious. She was saying, how are you? Like, what is happening? Are you alive? Because we have a lot of bombs and shooting now, and she's in Kharkiv with her husband. Um, when you go out to the street and see the cows there because people are trying to leave you know just living everything in their apartment or in their house and just living because the war began you know and you know that like four kilometers from your house there is an airport which is at the same time is trying to be conquered by the army of the other country right and everything is changed i mean uh i've been couple of times to my apartment in Bucha, but I can't, I still cannot live there because uh, for the whole city, there is only one supermarket working. There is only one pharmacy store is working. Uh, a few days ago, uh, you know, the transportation began working. The bridge between the city, between Kiev and Bucha is still not being repaired. It is still being destroyed. I mean, a lot of things has changed and, you know, uh, with my examples that I'm sharing, I'm trying to p tell people, guys, we are living in the very cruel society which is built by us. And we're the ones that we can only change it. We should not rely on the media, which is the same people like us, like you and me. They are on, you know, they're getting salary from their, you know, employees and they are telling what they're supposed to tell. But at the same time, they understand that they are doing something wrong. I mean, uh, a lot of people who are being uh, cheated, who were, uh, you know, lied, and I feel sorry about them because they are um, humans like you and me. There, there, there is, you know, there can be actually, um, how to say that in English? benefit from those people if they start acting with you as a part of the creative society project as a part of the creative society in general because those people they definitely have some skills skills that you know not many people may have and those skills may become are may become beneficial for the whole society and as soon as we understand that we are all are a part of a global family, which is, for example, I personally felt when I was getting ready for the forum uh, that right now, right now, when I felt that together we can, together, I mean, those people who were a part of the, you know, preparation and making the global forum Right now, I'm thinking in the categories as we. We, I mean, we people from the Creative Society Project. We people like 
our entire community, we. And those people are thinking in pretty much the same way. Because when we're thinking in the categories like in the consumeristic categories, I mean, uh, like I, me, myself, for me, this is mine. This is uh, truly, you know, consumeristic mind thinking. But when we think in categories like we, us, and so on, uh, that's when everything is changing. That's when we are, you know, doing more and more and more together and benefiting together from what we're doing. Because it was mentioned several times today uh, during uh, this discussion that uh, we have technology, skills, opportunities, knowledges, competences to create everything enough for everyone in absolutely everything. The question is, what are we fighting for? For dominance. I'm sorry, but you are not immortal. You're mortal. I mean, what are you fighting for? Uh, I mentioned that during the forum that it doesn't matter how long you live, like 70, 80, 90, or a little bit over than 100 years, you are still mortal. Why create something that is making people suffer? I mean, why? What's the goal? What's the reason? Because, you know, we're all, uh, you know, God's children, and sooner or later we ha we'll have to report to our creator, to our father for, you know, what we've done, doesn't matter good or bad, we will have to report to him. And there will be a certain punishment for that, for what is done, what is not done, of course. That's why I would like to wish every person who will be watching us, dear friend, hurry and hurry very much to become a human being. Because, you know, days are very short. And I understood that from my experience being for two weeks under occupation when, you know, every hour you have bombing, shooting, just street fights uh, between, you know, armies in the streets where you used to walk with your child the day before. Um, it may end all very quickly. That's why hurry to become a human and try to, you know, to become a human until it's not too late. That That's what I would like to wish everyone. And I would like to say that, for example, getting ready for the forum, it was so much excitement, pleasure, that you are doing something really worth something that is benefiting you know not only you it's like when you're having you know a table full of food that you're not able to eat alone it is so much pleasure to share that food with other people you know making other people happy in return, you know, there is a saying that one good turn deserves another. When, some, when you did something good to other people, you know for sure that these people will make something good for you, you know. And the circle of good things, you know, is closed. And we are living in this circle when we, you know, do many, many good things for each other. And that never stops. That, that, that's so much pleasure. And I felt that, you know, felt a part of the family, of the Creative Society family, when we're, when we're doing something not only for me, myself, I, like in the consumerist format, but for us, for all of us together. And that's, that's unbelievably pleasant. That's, that's worth living for. Truly, that's worth living for. I love that. You know, and if at least once you feel that pleasure of sharing, of giving, of creating, you would not want anything different. Thank you. Thank you so much, Konstantin, for bringing that up, that we definitely need to overcome this 
me syndrome and start to think about other people. And definitely, thank you so much for emphasizing once again our personal responsibility. It's absolutely true that we are responsible for all terrible things that are happening in our society right now. But it's also true that we are responsible for a good thing that also could happen in our society. And we need to realize our power and our potential. When we all get together, there will be nothing impossible for us. And we definitely will be able to create beautiful future, beautiful world in which every single person can be happy. But we need to act and act right now because time works against us right now. And it is so true that right now the information about forum and information about creative society has to reach every single person on earth. Without that condition, we will not be able to succeed. And definitely we understand so clearly that if we will start to talk, start to tell people about that, the million well, people around us will continue to do so. And when million will speak and talk about creative society, then all the billions, all eight billions will learn about the forum and about the project. That's why we would like to ask Sharon, what can we do, what each of us can do in order that all eight billions of people will find out about forum and the solution, the creative society. We have already started by uh, translating to more languages that people can understand because we are not trying to um, get to certain group or certain uh, uh, people, but worldwide. So the more the forum is being translated to different languages, if people can hear what is being said or what is happening, with their own languages and this is what we're working hard to do as i'm trying to reach more zulus as possible as as, as i can to understand what really is happening around the world and what is happening around the world is not no or no one is going to fix it except for us and working together and if we could get even i know it has been translated for or for, for by 100 languages around the world which is a lot but we still have more 200 and something languages around the world can be also reached so by um saying us through social media through word of mouth to however we can to to, to ask more people to work together with you know um in zulu we say meaning a hand watch each other so you cannot do it alone but we need other people to help and to um uh say this word and in in, in their language that they are people are understanding much better yeah i think that's it thank you thank you so much Sharon. and it's really important that uh, there are, uh, was a really a lot of interpretations and um, you know it's also what I understand personally even uh, participate uh, participate in the preparation of the forum and uh, making interpretations uh, combining and assembling all these a lot of facts that we have uh, done it is always a first step a step that we made together but beside that, there are a lot of other steps that we need to do. And we need to really uh, ourselves become a mass media because we ourselves, uh, ordinary people, have a lot of contacts and um, we can just spread this message to our friends and uh, people that we don't know. We can talk about it to at our relatives, at, uh, to our relatives, to people uh, who really are not indifferent because you know there are really a lot of places uh, a lot of organizations which assemble people who are not indifferent and are already facing these problems and they are all around the globe speaking their uh, different languages and different countries these organizations but we can come to here come to them and spread this information provide this information so they can uh, join us and we are together can reach much more people because we know a lot of uh, 
people around us. And we can use uh, other different social net networks. We can use um, everything that we use in our daily life, but not only to uh, share some photos of uh, where we have been, but share the most vital information that we have right now. And, you know, when we spread in this information as much as we can, we're doing it together and we helping our human potential to unite. Because only with potential of everyone on the Earth, we can stop this climatic threat and we can turn our planet into a really thriving world where everyone can be happy. And it depends only on us. And for the first time in history, all of humanity is facing a common external enemy. And this enemy is climate. And in the face of planetary danger, it's necessary to re really be united, that all of the people will unite. And because we are people and we want to live. Dear guests, thank you so much for taking the time and participating in this enriching conversation. Your contribution is really important and truly valuable. And right now, I would like to address our viewers. Dear friends, if you feel that these facts are at utmost important to you, and you would like to make your contribution to the betterment of all humankind, please, don't wait. You can start acting right now. And it's really very simple. The information that you heard today during our today's discussion and that was voiced by our respected speakers from all parts of the world during the forum, Global Crisis, we are people we want to live, has to be heard by every human being on the planet Earth. And we can use all, all kinds of media that we have, you know, different platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, everywhere we are connected to other people and we can spread it. So the best thing that you can do right now is to share it with everyone you know. And I once again would like to highlight the importance of every person in the world. Because when we are united in one goal, we can really make this difference. And once again, we appeal to you, dear viewers, if you are a human, if you are a hero and you are ready to act for the life of all humankind, please inform everyone you can about the fact that the survival of all of us and our planet depends on each of us. And once again, we would like to thank everyone who has participated in a preparation, interpretation and broadcast of our today's international discussion. And we are very, very grateful to our guests for, for their wisdom, for um, their insight that they shared with us today. Thank you very much, and we will see you next time.